specific tools for dealing with unit testing. There are a couple of tools which are covered. One of them is called doc test. That is a very simple tool. Idea of doc test is very, very simple. You repeat a interactive session as a comment. If you are testing something, you will type something in the triple greater than prompt and you expect an answer, right. For example, e is power of 4, if you type the answer should be true. So, you just cut and paste literally that session into a comment and you run doc test, doc test knows what to do. Let us look at the slide, it is easier to understand from the slide. You can see right beneath the function definition, we have written a triple quoted string which is called a doc string. As part of the doc string, we type the code we would have typed interactively and the answer. Okay. And then this is considered normal good practice, this is what is called a doc string. So, if you do this, you remember we typed plot question mark in i python, it showed something, what it was showing was actually the doc string. So, if you write doc strings for your function, when somebody uses them, they can get the help, so you write that. The idea of doc test is again very simple, as part of the doc string in the end, you write this, the 3 greater than should be familiar as the python prompt. So, if you have written the gcd function, you would have written gcd 48 comma 64, you hit enter, it will show 16. So, you simply type that. In fact, very often we do not type that, we simply cut and paste. Now, you run doc test on this, we will show you in a minute how to do it. Doc test is intelligent enough to, because it is convention, it will read the doc string, look for those lines which start with this and the next line. Using this, it will test and tell you whether you are effectively saying, if this is typed, this should be the answer. Doc string can parse this and run it and check whether the answer is coming. Very, very simple way to add tests and the way to run it is this, import doc test, doc test dot test mod that is all. If you do that, any doc test you have written will run. Let us now change this, I will save it. as tddu2.py, triple quoted string. write a comment, Let us say we have written this, how do we test it? Import
first T D D 2. So, that that function is available, the function is e is power of 2. Okay, it is actually painful to do it this way, we will do it the simpler way. Import, I will skip the underscore main part because that is only extra typing. Doc test, doc test dot test mod. Thanks. So, that is the type of error you will get, we will, we will see the error. So, if there is no output that means your doc test passed. So, we will make an error to see understand 3 should return false, but you have made an error see oh sorry it gives you a test failed at the bottom. Okay. So, this is how it will react if there is a error. or no yes. This is a very simple framework, pretty useful in about 30 percent of the cases. So, your documentation provides a way to verify whether your code is working. Like I said, how do you do that? You import, you type this, cut and paste, put it back into the documentation. This is a very simple way to implement self contained tests. Advantage there is no need for this underscore mean and all that. if it is there it can be run separately. All right. Now, the other framework is called unit test or which is lot of recipe you have to do a lot of stuff. Okay. I will leave you to read the slides and the documentation, we have not done anything extra. If you remember the yesterday we wrote code in underscore underscore mean you said data 0, data 1, data 2 same idea we have used. We have a file called gcd test cases dot that we used a list yesterday correct. If you remember everybody is looking blank as if yesterday was 500 million years away. Yesterday we wrote that right same thing now instead of using a list we are reading from a file and we are adding the data to this and we are saying append this as a test cases. So, this is essentially a recipe to do, these are the part of the recipe you have to type import unit test, you import the module you want to test in this case GCD, unit test is standard, then this is recipe you have to do this test grid test GCD function is inheriting from unit test or test case. There is a setup method where you do everything which is done once. Then you write a function which a name is test underscore followed by your function name. If your function name is e is power of 2, you will write test underscore e is power of 2 and then you write this self assert equal. Assert equal means GCD of A B must be equal to G. If it is true, it is fine. If it is false, it will complain. Tear down is 
close the file, do everything. So, just run it. What is the advantage? Till now, the test code was part of the file we were testing, correct? So, we said if underscore, underscore, name underscore, main and all that. So, we were cluttering up our code with the test. Unit test provides for a nice separation of the test code from the code that is tested. So, your test code is in a separate file, but which code corresponds to which function that is understood by this convention. Whenever there is a function name starting with test underscore, unit test will look for a function with the name bar which is remaining and then do the right things. This is mostly convention and as procedure to do certain things, nothing much to learn here. You simply have to follow the procedure. Procedure is import unit test, import the module under test, write this, create one class, setup part is specific to the module, because this is where you are describing the test data relevant to the module. If e is power of 2, there will be only two values, one test value and one true or false value. For GCD, there will be three values, two arguments and the return GCD. So, the code will change appropriately. Test, test cases dot append, test cases dot append is a test cases is a predefined variable. Everything is once it is done, you write a function test underscore is power of 2. You will say k self test cases a equal to case of 0, b equal to case of 1, self dot assert equal is power of 2 dot is power of 2 a comma b, because there are only two values and the b values are supposed to be true or false. So, your file will contain true or false and this is wrong. So, you will have one unit test file for each function tested. You can have multiple unit test functions for each function tested also. Sometimes that may be the best way to test. Normally, the ratio for each function may even be you may have three functions testing a function, three test functions testing a function that is perfectly ok, because that may be the cleanest way to write. Like I said, there is nothing much to learn here except what are the rules, this is near mechanical. If you use a decent IDE, it will do most of it itself, you just have to fill in the blanks. There is lot of detail, so do not get lost in the detail. Understand what this buys you. In the first case, we wrote the test code as part of the module itself. So, that is not really useful. Then we came up with the idea of the scaffold underscore underscore name underscore underscore mean. Still, if you are writing a lot of tests for a function, you are carrying around a lot of extra baggage. Why? Whenever you use GCD, that still will be imported. So, unit test gives you a nice way to separate the test from the code that is tested. So, you can improve the test independent of improving the codes. So, whenever you make a change to the code, you run the same unit test. The codes pass, your change is good. Typically, the way unit tests grow is somebody files a bug report does not work for this input. So, you look at it and say, oh yeah, this is the mistake. So, you write another unit test which tests for that sort of data, make the code change, add to the unit test and run the whole thing. So, that the function now has the new functionality plus the earlier unit test guarantee you have not broken existing functionality. Do you understand? Shall you all act as if we understand? Since you do not want to acknowledge we understand, let us at least act as if we understand and move on. Okay, fine. We declare this as understood. So, these are the components. Setup is essentially where all the data is read and it makes sense to have a separate file. Because if you want to add some more data, you should not be editing code, you should only be 
editing a data file. Put setup's job is to read that data and load it into a list. Tear down is to delete the whatever data items you use so that memory is freed. Test GCD is the actual test code. Assert equal is a new function that is provided by the unit test module. In fact, the whole idea of unit test is to have a lot of asserts. You may say assert equal, assert not equal, assert greater than, assert less than, you have all those. And this is the other thing. Unit testing is a good thing. Test driven development is writing the unit test first. You may or may not use the unit test approach of putting it in a separate file. Do not confuse the idea of unit testing and test driven development with the tools unit test. Unit test is a tool given to capture and execute unit tests in a comfortable way. The idea of unit testing does not depend on this module. The ease power of 2 wrote, we did not rely on anything else. So, how would we have used that? After we are happy, we would have deleted all the test code and just given the ease power of 2. Or, if you are a little protective, we will save it with the test code, make a copy without the test code and distribute it, which is ok for small functions. But in a typical full fledged application environment, what will happen? There will be hundreds of functions and hundreds of files. So, if you are going to remember to delete and do, you are going to have a full time doing that. So, separating into two ensures this is done comfortably. And you can also put these in a separate directory, the code in a separate directory and everything will be taken care of by unit test module. Understood? There is only a procedure and some recipes to be learnt here. The concepts are the same as what we did. The code you write is still your business. What are the unit tests my code should pass? That is where your thinking comes. This is simply extra fitting to make some of the bookkeeping easier. It does not add to your ability to do anything other than doing bookkeeping easily. Can we move on? I want to drive down to a next conceptual thing. Let us revisit our friend Armstrong. Now, we have written some tests here also, right? but something is fundamentally wrong with these tests. Why? We can write this test only if we know everything about the answer. How often that is true? If you know all the answers, where do you need to write tests? So, do we say, oh, then Armstrong should not be tested? Is it likely to be a logical conclusion? Is it a like logical conclusion that Armstrong should not be tested or cannot be tested? What do you think? 2.30 is not a time for thinking, is it? So, what is the problem? So, this whole approach is wrong, but how else can we test is Armstrong? Do you understand why these tests are ridiculous? This is like saying you can solve the problem after you have solved it. In order to solve the problem, you have to solve the problem. That is very interesting way of defining it, but that is exactly what these tests are doing. In order to test the problem, you ought to have successfully run it, but how do you define successfully running it without having bugs? How do you define not having bugs? we have tested and found not bugs. So, this whole business is pure bullshit, very good looking bullshit if I might add, but it is still bullshit. So, what does that mean? It means the way we have run arms, written Armstrong is untestable. 
that is what we often talk about testability of code. Is the code testable? The way we have written Armstrong, it is not testable. The only way to test it is by running it, producing the right answers and verifying whether it is producing the right answers or by some other means knowing the right answer. Then why are you writing this? If you know the answers are 153, 370, 371 and 407, why are you writing the code? Might as well write a program which print 1753, 370, 371, 370, right? Because you know the answers already. Do you understand what I am driving at? This whole test is nonsense. But how do we then test? Or do we say no point testing? I am suggesting neither of these is the right corollary to derive. The right corollary to derive is boss, the way we have written Armstrong is bullshit. It is not testable and as such bad code. It produces results. How do you know? Because we know the results. What happens about a program for which we do not know the results? Let us remember the word is unit testing. The whole idea of the function is to generate Armstrong numbers. We are not doing unit testing. In other words, our Armstrong is too big. There is no unit to be tested. In six and a half lines, what is too big is the next logical question. Am I communicating? without meaning to sound arrogant, this is the real value you will get by having a trained for having an, uh, an experienced developer teaching you. So, I seriously request that you put in a little extra effort and listen. This code as an answer in an exam will get marks, why? Nothing wrong with it, because exam questions you know the answer already. So, while the power comes back, let us hammer that point a little more. In a production environment, you do not have the luxury of knowing the answers. And if you know the answers, you have the luxury of not having to write the code. Only in college, you have to write code even when you know what the answer is. In a production environment, if I know these are the four Armstrong numbers, I will be an idiot to write a code. But if I have a piece of code, how is it testable is an interesting question to ask. So, which is why I am using Armstrong as a pointer to uh oh, this does not give me testable pieces, this gives solves the whole problem. In other words, I was asked to generate Armstrong numbers. Now, I would say, you know what? We can generalize, this is for 3 digits, for 4 digits we want to generalize. So, we test with 3, then we assume it is correct for 4, reasonable answer. A more useful answer is to say that is correct, but can we find a way of improving the testability of this code? One of the good spin offs of the last 10, 15 years of software development advances is this concept of writing testable code. We often talk about readable code, thisable code, thatable code. Testable is a new ability, testability is a new ability that is a nice thing that has come. So, often if you see a piece of code and you do not see a way of testing it clearly, it could mean one of two things. You have not understood the problem enough or you are not comfortable in TDD possible. More likely, you have not designed the problem to the right degree of granularity. So, we will use Armstrong once again as our example.
this is the code we got and we want to write it more generally. We want to write it how more generally? I want to generate Armstrong numbers from A to B, A B given. So, 500 to 27200. Return a list of all Armstrong numbers which are between A and B. If 500 and 27000 are given, no 3 digit should be returned, some 4 digit should be returned and some of the 5 digit should be returned. Now, I want to write code like that, which means I have to break down Armstrong further. How do you break down? What is the idea of breaking down? Writing it in testable chunks. How can we do that? Anybody has an idea? Again, 240 is not exactly the best of time to have ideas. For the record, I am writing code from 1985 and I am teaching approximately from the same time. No, lot of people have learnt by making mistakes, lot of people have learnt by arguing, lot of people have learnt by discussing. I do not know of even one student who learnt by keeping quiet. I humbly suggest you are not going to break that record. So, start talking. So, start saying something. <laughs> People have learned by saying nonsense, but nobody has learned by keep, learned by keeping quiet. How can we break down Armstrong further? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, there is a we can use a for loop. How does it change matters? Then we can uh, give the range and. Uh, oh, that is for getting on strong. Yeah. I am saying I want to test this function. So, break down this on strong. How do I do that? I am making a claim this on strong as written is too big. Just a minute. Wonderful, but how do I break this down further? You are adding conditions to the code, you are adding conditions to test for the code, for the code to be applied. I am talking about this code itself is too big. Okay. Okay. Samson's comment was if I understood him right, something along the lines of. whatever range something like that right for some range agreed that is how we ultimately have to use it. And if I understood Samir's comment correct you have to come in and check whether n is less than 100 etcetera am I right true. If I am looking at what is called adding gods to the code, what you are saying is right, but you are not simplifying Armstrong any further. I want to break down Armstrong, I am making a claim it is too big a function, it is doing too many things, that is why you are not able to test. Find the number of digits. That is a nice SMS. Can we hold a conversation instead? Look at my beard. I am not the SMS generation guy. I like to talk. Translated to English, I am saying expand your answer. We, uh, we need to find the number of digits in N. Very good. Instead of putting that 3 as a magic number, we can improve the function, though we are not breaking it down by
excellent starting point, but instead of breaking down it has put on some more weight. But yes, this does generalize nicely, we are going there. Now combined with Samson's idea of the for loop, we are in reasonable territory, we have to write number of digits of course, presume it is writable. But now we already have a piece, now number of digits is testable, correct? We have added one testable piece. The idea is exactly that, instead of thinking in terms of Armstrong as a single monolithic entity, can we think in terms of pieces? So, how do you do that? First rule or one of the most important rules for writing good code, never fall in love with your code. Delete your existing code often, you will write better code. How? That very thing is confusing our approach. We are looking at it saying it looks nice, it is working, little here, little there only we are doing. So, delete it. Now, let us think of priori. What are we trying to do? Samson's idea is a good starting point for n in range a comma b, somewhere a and b will appear by magic. What do you want to do? You want to print Armstrong numbers, right? Good. Okay. Let us stick to our old example. Of course, we can add make e and b read from a file or accept from the user or anything. Now, we have to write e is Armstrong. We already wrote it, yeah, I know, but we are going to write it with a slightly more optimistic viewpoint or slightly more lazy style. Translate into English Armstrong definition. That is nice. Now, we have broken Armstrong into two pieces. There is a piece called sum of cubes, and there is a piece called digits. So, digits should return what? Should return a list of numbers, and sum of cubes should cube the individual numbers and sum them. These are testable. because they have an answer for all possible numbers. These are testable. Once you do it, you can test digits separately, sum of cubes separately, then rest assured is Armstrong is working without having to exhaustively test is Armstrong. So, what about digits? How do you write digits? We will call it number two digits. How do we write it? We have to, we, we agreed we will return a list, correct? So, we need a list somewhere.
understandable, testable, separately, we can do anything we want. We can use our unit test, doc test, whatever you want to test this. I am not going to test it, because my goal is to teach you the approach, not run tests. Okay. Now, what about sum of cubes? Sum of cubes is testable. Yes, sir. Mistake. We will generalize in a minute. Because we have written sum of cubes, it has to be 3. We have to. We want to write general Armstrong but we are sticking to 3, should not we fix it? Yes, we have to. Huh? Yes. So, so, sum of cubes is not correct, we have to write sum of powers, correct? And what is the power we want? name has to be changed. Are we better off compared to where we started? We ended up, we ended up with some 20 lines of code where we had 5, but surprisingly we claim we are lot better than where we started two reasons. Now, our code is testable and we have some two nice pieces of code which we can reuse. Num two digits is usable in other contexts also, same for sum of powers. If you remember yesterday, I said that code will get only 4 out of 10, this will get all of 6 out of 10, because it is still terribly written. It is not good python code, because it does not use many things which python can do. But my goal is not to write high funda python code, I will show it to you in the end for comparison. But I believe this code is wonderful as it stands, it is readable, there I do not see anything which requires explanation. Is there in the code? None. And we have two pieces of code which are testable by themselves and reusable. If given another problem which deals with numbers, we are very likely to find these useful. Where did we arrive at this gem of an idea? By thinking about testability of the code. Whenever we have written a chunk of code which is much larger and a unit testing approach seems to be doing a bulldozer or chicken and egg problem. In order to test it, we ought to successfully run it type of situation you end up with, then you think and say maybe I have designed it wrong. Can I design it into more testable chunks?
and genuinely you are doing unit testing now, because these are the units of functionality you are testing. And note that these two have nothing to do with Armstrong. There is nothing in sum of powers that ties it to Armstrong. That is a good definition of a unit. Similarly, there is nothing in number to digits which ties it to Armstrong or leg strong or anything of that sort. Are you with me? I hope the CS people have something interesting to take home. You could use this as an example of functional decomposition if you want, but to me it is canonical message is testability is a lovely guide to look at the program design you have done and see you know what you are thinking in two big chunks. We all keep saying we should write reusable code, easy to understand code. That is all nice in theory. How do you write in practice? By looking, can I test it as a, does it do a job, a small job and only that job? More importantly, in my opinion, this is a lot easier to explain than the code we wrote. This is a lot more code do not fall into that fallacy. Typing speed is 40 characters per minute, 40 words per minute. I mean typists are supposed to type 80 words per minute. Let us give ourselves half the speed. That is about 8 lines per minute, 1 minute versus 3 minutes. But the actual time you took to write the original Armstrong was how much? Half an hour? Now, thinking this way, you would have done it more correctly, more reusably in probably 15 minutes. Yes or no? If you are thinking in these steps, you would have done Armstrong in 15 minutes, lot more correctly and ended up with lot more usable code. What pointed us in the right direction? The fact that as written Armstrong was not really amenable to good testing. Am I communicating? Can we move on? Do you have any questions? And usually when you write like this, I will make an arrogant statement, it does not need to be tested. This function works as stated. Why? Because like I said, this is not the canonical Python code by the way. Like I said, never fall in love with your own code. So, you want to see actual Python code I might want to write. That is the 9 out of 10 Python code, that, that is lot more Python than you want to know. Compared to the previous code, this code has one fantastic property. What is that? 
do you see any variable whose value is changing? x equal to x plus 1, n equal to n by 10, s is equal to s plus p cubed. Do you see any such variable anywhere? All variables in this code are immutable. There is no variable because there is nothing is varying in this whole code, which makes it lot more comfortable to reason about the correctness of the code. Negative value means that, string that I would probably check in somewhere else, but yes, that is a point. You want absolute value, yes, number to digits, whether it should have, yes, I can add a guard. I can add a guard for that, but yeah. Let me stress this is what we call functional programming style. There are 0 variables which are varying, there are 0 variables. We sometime back said we have got lot more lines of code that is okay. Now, even that problem is not there. We probably have as many lines of code as earlier. I will sincerely suggest typing down this code is not going to improve your ability to write. Some is a built in function which returns the sum of any list passed to it. The expression of x for x in p is what is called a list comprehension, returns a new list. So, like I have probably already told you a couple of times, the nicest point about this code is it is functional, no variables. So, it is lot more easy to reason about it lot more easy to verify that it is doing what it is supposed to do. Which brings us to another wonderful advantage of Python. It is equally easy to write nice procedural code which you just now did and nice functional code. Both are perfectly easy to do and it is a choice of your way of doing things. Again actually bolt all this to a class and make these methods and call it object oriented style. The most of the IT companies know they are having some coding standards. So, this standards are a such useful uh, at that point of time. So, that the followers know next uh, generation to modify the code now will follow the standards for that. Okay. So, it is Since that is what I do for a living, train fresh software engineers to work in big, big ticket companies, yes. That is one of the big things taking a small personal digression, I use python to teach programming logic. That way people can forget the syntax, because where is the syntax here? Even if you do not know python, this code should be readable. Definitely the previous code is readable even if you do not know python. I would suggest even this is readable. So, you can focus on solving a problem and writing reusable code. Yes, testability is something which all big enterprise companies want, because they want plug and play employees. If you are not there, you should be replaced by somebody else, which will work only if the pieces of code are self standing, testable and assemblable like this. 